Hey everybody, this is Perch, and uh, this is a good mail. This is somebody actually giving more thoughts than a question. And I think this uh, sums up pretty well kind of my thoughts on manga and what's happening. So right now, just for what it's worth, um, suddenly a lot of people are talking about manga. And in many cases, uh, they, they've been talking about it for a year, year plus. But the boom of manga, I think you can really trace back to about, uh, I want to say, three years ago. And much of that came from kind of three things that happened in pretty quick succession. And and by the way, when I say when they happened, I don't necessarily mean they were invented. I mean, they gained public consciousness. People became aware. If you remember that kind of uh, you know, crossing the chasm graph of, of stages, it went from the early adopter phase to the mainstream. And the three things that all kind of hit at once were, number one, streaming, Funimation, despite the fact that I know there's people on Twitter who, who hate that service, um, gained mainstream acceptance. And they did that by getting a bunch of marketing and promotion in traditional outlets. I know Best Buy did a big campaign. Um, it was relatively cheap entry. And they gained a lot of subs and they gained a lot of awareness during that period. Uh, Shonen Jump came out with an app that was cheap. That's the second thing where you could kind of all you can eat comics and it took. Digital wasn't taking and frankly still isn't taking. You're watching Marvel Unlimited have to create a bunch of original content and, and other things to try and gain some awareness. It's still not terribly working. DC did the deal with Webtoon, and that was good for DC, but that's kind of even fallen off the radar a little bit. Where Shonen, uh, you know, the Shueisha and the Shonen Jump app has done amazing. And having a glimpse of those numbers, and I should do a video showing those numbers, it continues to grow dramatically. That's the second thing. The third thing is that a couple properties hit big, and most notably, uh, the big one was My Hero Academia. It uh, it it burst. It it just hit the right note in the U.S. and it got picked up. Demon Slayer came along behind it, and there were others. Uh, one Punch Man and and others kind of grew as well. But My Hero Academia uh, hit and hit big in uh, in the U.S. and that opened the door for a lot of other things. So the last. Three years we've been seeing this boom. Some have said it's five years. I mean, it, it, you can you can argue the point however you want, but um, it that those are kind of the big three things that happened all within about six months of each other. They all kind of hit kind of mainstream consciousness and and became a very very big deal. What is interesting as a sidebar there is My Hero Academia to me is probably the number one book in comics or manga that feels a lot like the Chris Claremont era of X Men. If you remember kind of the late 70s, early 80s of kind of how the X-Men, both the drama and the interpersonal relationships and how the team was forming and growing and learning and the threats, it, it could not, I mean, it is the absolute spiritual successor to Claremont's X-Men. And it's baffling to me on a number of levels that this is coming from manga and not uh, not U.S. comics where there, there actually is the X-Men. Like it's it, that that's pretty crazy. Um, once again, I think there's an absolute template for you know American Western comic makers to look at. Like, hey, look how My Hero Academia structures its story with uh, subplots and long-term storytelling and threats and the heroes having to struggle and the villains being threatening. It's like it's all right there. If you want to know how to make a superhero franchise, just read My Hero Academia. Copy that is the answer. But anyway. So here's this uh, viewer mail, which gives their own spin on it, and I agree with what's being said here. So it says, here are some of my thoughts on the current manga anime craze. My wife grew up in a Francophone country, and manga and anime were widely available there and very mainstream going back decades. There are still quite a bit of manga that have yet to be translated to French, but not English yet. Or sorry, I read that poorly. That have been translated to French, but not English yet. That That is true. There, the uh, France and some European countries are way ahead, and it's it's almost more normalized as opposed to a craze there. I think that would be the word I'd use. Here in the U.S., though, things are different. It's taken a long time to get to the point where we are now. There are online communities that have been growing the fan base of this stuff for years, fan-made translations, dubs, etc. Mainstream availability here in the U.S. is somewhat new. Even 10 years ago, the selection was nowhere near what it is now. Same deal with streaming services like Country Roll and the like. That's um, that's true, uh, but uh, but sort of true. There there have been booms of manga in the early 2000s. There were in the 90s. There were, but you know they didn't pick up as much steam, and in many cases they didn't have the properties lined up 
to really have them translate and have them cross over. The ease of use. I mean, the, the reason why it's hitting right now is because you can you can go books, you can go digital, you can go uh, anime, you got you can go toys. You can, there's just wherever the interest is going to catch you, there is a foothold there. And if you go back 10, 15 years ago when manga had its previous boom, um, you had kind of media, you had videos, you had a much harder time getting the manga. And then you had like weird experiments like the Marvel mangaverse and, and things that weren't really manga either. I mean, it was just Marvel's attempt at trying to be manga, but it, was, it wasn't really. So you didn't have, right now, if you wander in and you're like, well, whatever you prefer, manga is going to have an option for you. Or sorry, you know, in, in terms of that space. Anyway, sorry, I'll continue with mail. So there is an amount of newness and pent up demand for it all, in my humble opinion. Compare that to big name American comics, which are often pushing characters that are very, very old at this point and have arguably been overexposed to the public. A few bad Hollywood adaptations over the years don't help either. That, that is true. Now imagine you're a teenager. Certainly you don't want to read the stuff that your parents were reading at your age. That's old man, old lady stuff. You want to read things that, uh, that seem like they speak to your generation. It's no different than not wanting to listen to music from my father's generation, example Elvis, when I was 16 or whatever. I think that's I think everything that's been said there is true. I think there's there's more to it than that, but I think that's absolutely right. I, I don't think it's a lost battle. I think if you are a teenager reading Spider-Man, Batman, all that other stuff can certainly work. And and the evidence I would give for that is the Marvel Cinematic Universe is wildly popular, not just with you know, the, the dad generation, but with the kids as well. Kids eat that stuff up. Um, you, you, there's definitely an option there. However, um, it does require a shift in, in how it's marketed and how it's distributed. And the challenge you have is if, if you're trying, you know, again, it's like comics are doing a, a Frankenstein like job of promoting and selling themselves uh, but they're picking many of the worst options in each category. So they're going to say, all right, we're going to try and create some newness. We're going to introduce more of a manga art style into the books, which you, you know, you certainly have seen. Uh, Somebody is pointing out that uh, Phil Jimenez uh, has a manga like style to his work. And I'm like, no, no, it's that, 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 that's not true. But then I look at it like, no, there abs absolutely is true. There is definitely uh, parts to his style that, that, do feel and read like uh, like like action and dynamic manga. It's, it, they're absolutely you're seeing more of that enter into comics, and at the same time though, you're seeing a high price point. I mean, a very expensive five dollars entry. You're seeing a very convoluted. Okay, we're rebooting now. We're not rebooting. We've got legacy numbers, but we don't have legacy numbers. But we've got variants. I mean, you got a very confusing mess. Of choices where it, it feels like nobody is committed to any one choice. They're trying like five of them at once at a high price point with a character that does have a lot of legacy baggage, but rather than lean into that baggage, they're instead trying to kind of make it accessible for new readers, but not completely. And so, so it, it's just, it's like they're picking a bunch of bad options all at once is how it comes across. Um, I, I think that you know, so I don't think the game is lost for Western comics. I do think that, you know, characters like the X-Men, characters like Spider-Man, like Batman, they've got great market presence. They have a brand people want, but you've got to tell a story where it's really obvious. Here's how you jump in. Here's how it speaks to you. And and again, we've seen comic companies do this. The, the Ultimate Universe for Marvel largely did this. It's like, hey, it's not your father's X-Men. Here is the new X-Men. And sure enough, what happened is, you know, the, the older collectors bought the Ultimate Universe because they wanted to see what it was all about. The people who came into the Ultimate Universe as their entry point would uh, then cross over and start buying regular comics as well because they wanted just more to read. It was exciting. It, it worked. Comics have to start thinking about entry points into them. And, and to my point earlier, that's why manga has done very well because manga basically said, hey, it's going to be just brain dead simple to figure out where to begin. Even though we know you can figure it out, you can use Google, we're still going to make it absolutely the easiest way possible to step into it. We're also going to make it so you can come in from anime, and because we're going to make the anime adaptations really similar to the manga, if you started watching the anime and you decide to read the book, then uh, you know it actually it's a really clever trick, what they've done in a lot of cases, because the anime, of course, comes out after the book. 
But what happens is you start watching the anime and you're like, wow, this is really great. I'm loving My Hero Academia. I wonder what's going to happen next. I guess I'll have to wait until next year for the new season to you know, be made, come out, get translated and be in my hands. Or I can go right now to the bookstore or to you know, my digital app and I can see the next year's worth of comics because they're already there. I get to read ahead. Well, what happens uh, as you're reading, you notice subtle, you know, you, you, you're like, oh, here's some subtle subplots that I don't remember in the anime. I guess I should go back and collect those books because I did love the anime after all. So I might as well go buy it back and buy the books and read those. And pretty soon you've got people who are basically paying and consuming for two different tracks, two different pieces of media at the same time. And manga is doing that incredibly well. The attach rate right now for Demon Slayer or manga, the book and anime is apparently 80%. What that means is 80% of the people who buy the manga or buy the anime are buying the other product as well. They're buying both. That kicks ass. If you're trying to build a business, that is um, that's an, an amazing number to hit. And comics, I mean, this is, again, I've said this before, and it does drive me absolutely insane. Why doesn't Warner Media or Marvel do the easiest possible thing, which is go back, start with Fantastic Four, number one, hire an animation studio out of, I mean, who knows, the, the studio that does One Piece, that that's not the highest quality animation. I'm sorry, I love One Piece to death, but there are some episodes that are, look really good, and there's some episodes that, are, that look terrible. Hire an animation studio, hand them the comic book, say, here you go, adapt the comic book. Just, just adapt it all as word for word as you can. Just the here's the here's the template. Go, and just start putting it out. I think you'd be shocked at how many people would be into it, and then you could get that crossover appeal, and it would help bridge the gap that the letter writer here notes, which is, you know, we don't want to read, uh, you know, my dad's comics. We don't listen to my dad's music. Well, if you've got a brand new cartoon out that's adapting this stuff, you do feel like you're getting something new. You will go back and read the comics. It will no longer feel like your dad's generation of stuff. It'll feel like something new to you, something that's that's good. Comics have to start thinking this way. The more that comics continue to like dig their head in the sand and, and say, we're going to pursue this one path or this other path, again, I, I just want to go and, and hack away at all the stupid ideas that people still have stuck in their head. I, I, you know, there are many people at Marvel right now who say you can never adapt the comics one to one. Well, why not? Well, the comics just have a different pacing to the storytelling. It just uh, you you could never do it. It wouldn't never she it wouldn't make sense. And besides, a lot of those comics are written in the sixties and seventies. They're so weird now. No kid knows what a phone booth is. What if there's a phone booth in the comic? Like nobody's even gonna know what to do. The kids are gonna reject it. Oh bullshit! Nostalgia sells really really well. Hey, you know what's selling well right now? Vinyl. You know what a pain in the ass vinyl is? I mean, I grant you, I love the experience and the the sound, and all the, the pop and kind of that classic sound. But I mean, nobody in their right mind is like, man, I uh, I love the convenience of vinyl. It's not convenient. You, you're walking around with an iPhone. You can hit search in music and instantly be playing a song in like five seconds, as opposed to going and buying a vinyl album and digging out your record player and plugging that thing in and finding the track and scratching. the. I mean, like there's, there's nothing about vinyl. It's convenient. And yet you're seeing a lot of people go to it. Uh, are, are these people scared of nostalgic technology? Of course not. You just got to present it to them in a way that brings some value. Anyway, I think this is a very good mail. I do agree completely. I think there's a lot of interesting things going on. I do think that we're not in a manga, uh, manga bubble right now. I do think the U.S. will do an amazing job of figuring out how to fuck it up because they always do. They overexpose it and they they, they have no restraint and they, they, they absolutely are going to mess parts of this up. However, what Viz in particular, but other companies too, have done an extremely good job of is they are pacing themselves with the release of books. They're not, they're not just shooting them out like a shotgun. And they're being very, very clever about building a sustainable market getting their stuff into other stores, not relying on any one source. The deal they made with Target as an example, but there's, there's tons. They are clearly in it for the the long haul. And this is, uh, this is, this is is solid. It, It means the likelihood of manga having the floor drop out from under it is very, very low.
Um, still, I think some businesses will suffer, and I, I absolutely believe at some point DC and Marvel are going to be like, we know how to do manga. Here's Marvel manga. C.B. Sawalski used to live over in Japan. He, he can do, no problem. He can do this. Him and this Akira guy, they've got it all under wraps. They, 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 they're, they've got it. Here's Marvel manga, and it will suck ass. I, I'll guarantee it. Their, their best option is to do what they're kind of doing right now, which is just let Shonen uh, figure it out. Like they, the, the Deadpool manga, the Spider-Man gets a cat, that kind of other crazy shit. Just let them do it. They know what they're doing. They understand that market. The stuff uh, that gets translated and then brought over here makes more, makes sense. People like it. Just, uh, just don't, don't, don't be dumb. <laughs> don't be dumb, Marvel. Um, but anyway, we'll see. Anyway, thank you for the mail. Great mail. Th uh, absolutely agree with the point. And uh, let me know what all of you think in the comments below. And thanks for listening.